Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Focus Hive. Today we are going to talk about Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, who was an Irish-born British explorer and was a principal figure of the period known as the Heroic Age of Antarctic Exploration. I am Ravi Verma, your host of Focus Hive. Hello, lovely people. My name is Shivani Sharma. I have been into project management for around two to three years now, and uh, I work for a company called as Parallel. And today we are going to talk about uh, Shackleton endurance experience and how and why it still is known as the greatest uh, lesson in the field of leadership. Absolutely, Shivani. <laughs> as you said, uh, that the story of Sir Ernest. Shackleton is still one of the top stories or top uh, educational subject in management. Today we are going to draw some conclusions and parallels as and some important learnings that we should focus on in today's world while referring back to age-old stories. And uh, with that, we should just think about the time and the era that he was in and what kind of technological advancements they had uh, compared to what sure. we have today. So uh, Ravi, I would also want to add to this, like we are talking about a time when these expeditions used to be like very vigorous and people had to be like, they're not even sure like whether this can happen and how they're going to, you know, go through the whole way and their survival is at stake and still the destination is unknown and what they have to face in the middle is would be like something which is unknown to them absolutely and i mean i mean uh, today we have got uh, ml ai what not i mean so many satellites in the ozone layer and we got a f and we have a huge amount of data to analyze and predict uh, i'm sure back in the day we had none of these and uh, it was super scary uh, when anyone had to go and kind of in on an expedition to just go figure out places which has never been seen and uh, the exploration of Antarctic at that time was something of so much of value that whoever reaches there first that person himself his crew his country would all be I mean celebrated and would have name in the history and that's what i guess drove sir ernest shackleton so when we are talking about the endurance expedition particularly in this i would like want to little start on the previous expedition of shackleton because you know before going to the endurance he had already done two expeditions before if i correct I would not correctly remember the <laughs> years, but uh, the I think the discovery expedition and also uh, one was the uh, Nimrod expedition. So he he was not the leader, but he have seen the failed leadership in those two expeditions, and that is why he wanted to maybe compensate, and he started his own endurance expedition so endurance was the name of the ship for everyone who is listening to us and uh, when this expedition was going to start the first and the foremost thing was to uh, you know getting the crew together and uh, it was highly commendable on his part how he got the crew together and what he looked into them and with what competence he was taking people together that was actually quite brilliant if I speak as of today as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, if I mean, we could share the uh, question or the advertisement that he had put in the local newspaper uh, to call upon for candidates for the interview process. Uh, looking at that, I wouldn't say anyone with, uh, I mean, soft heart would even think about uh, applying for it, but people did. And and yes. he 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 got a crew together but i think we should we should share that uh, once when we prepare the podcast to go out i mean when we publish it we should mm -hmm. put a link to that uh, so that people know what kind of uh, yes job description he had i mean he mentioned 
vague uh, possibility of coming back alive uh, things like those severe challenges yeah. and uh, and co- the attributes that he chose uh, or he looked within people while he was building his crew is the key uh, in yes. that portion of his story right and as you've said right the previous expeditions that he was part of uh, who were led by someone else and i guess he had learning of leadership through those expeditions by by visualizing and experiencing how things were not supposed to be done and and i believe that is one of the major ways people learn things by looking at how things are not supposed to be done and then you learn that okay i should not do that myself when i get into that position and i believe uh, sir sackleton had that in 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 big mm-hmm. proportions now back to back yeah. to what you raised right the the interview process so yeah why don't you share more about that when shackleton had this uh, expedition in mind and he was looking for the right crew to be in with him to be on that voyage so he looked for people who had the right amount of attitude with them he didn't look for experience or skill or you know whatever um, other things we look up in a candidate maybe grit a uh, small amount yes it plays a, a vital role when you are into such kind of big expeditions but he wanted people with right amount of attitude because as rightly said people with attitude and a great mindset are inevitable to be success holders so this is something that i really uh, link to in today's aspect also when me as a manager when i go and hire people uh, after the technical rounds are done i usually talk to them something which is like out of context i just wanted to check the nerve of the person whether he is the right fit or not how is his mindset how will he will be able to cope up with pressure and would he be able to deliver on time what if it there are time constraint and project is overdue you have a go live date what will he do so that mindset and attitude is very important when we are hiring in this time as well so this is i think the first lesson that we learn that hiring candidates with right amount of attitude absolutely and i think attitude played a big role in the whole expedition and uh, from his i guess from his own experience he knew that uh, so that brings me to the role of a hiring manager right uh, any anybody hiring and listening to this podcast i would definitely encourage people to understand and know what they are hiring for the whole job description and requirements that sir ernest shackleton has posted it clearly meant that he was going for a dangerous and uh, a, a very grilling expedition and uh, it needed people to have certain qualities and attitude in fact i would just add an adjective to that says positive attitude uh, attitude towards life that no matter what we, we will get through it that's the attitude he was looking for and why i'm sharing this story right there the world is full of stories and uh, sir shackleton's story is one of the important ones but why are we sharing it today is because these attributes or these points that are being raised uh, via this story resonates with us as you've said that you you yourself follow such practices in interviews uh, when you are hiring people uh, in my own experience of uh, hiring people for past 7 years i have had experiences with uh, people with great technical skills uh, absolute fitment and shitty attitude and we we would go back and curse ourselves as to why we hired them and that's that's gave me a first hand experience of hiring people with the right attitude and mindset i have compromise on the technical fitment 
because I know if, if the person has the right attitude, the right growth mindset, they will learn it. Given them the opportunity, given them the situation and guidance and handholding, they would learn that and they will ensure that the deliverables are given. So for me, uh, attitude, mindset, as you've just explained, are uh, the right. prime, prime attributes of any candidate that I, that I till today, that I hire uh, or interview. So those are important right, attributes. Yeah. Right, he said, Ravi. Yeah. Yep. So when I talk about Shackleton's journey in particular, Ravi, so, uh, you know, it, it was like they were traveling towards Antarctica and, uh, you know, they had to cross the channel, even if like, you know, they were warned by a lot of mariners who had great experience and they were like, Shackleton, you will face a lot of difficulties and, you know, ice is going to get thick. And how would you sail through? through that and you know you'll uh, you'll be reaching to your goal post or maybe your uh, destination how would you figure that out but he was very uh, you know determined he was headstrong and he really wanted to do this and his men were actually very supportive in that as well and they set sail and and then you know what like every other expedition the same happened they were stuck in the ice and slowly and steadily the water started getting so cold that it, it just froze and they just couldn't move and they were stuck in the middle of the ocean with yeah, the but uh, I, if i remember river. right uh, if i remember right he was he was within 97 miles of the pole and uh, right. that kind of gave him more courage right and right. Uh, and, and and as you've said right about these sailors warning them as you rightly said uh, before you start anything new there are a lot of people who would come and give you gyan tell you otherwise <laughs> uh, scare you and and tell you maybe you will not succeed but uh, you got to be courageous you got to believe in your yourself and your team and uh, drive forward and that's what he did and he was 97 miles close to the pole and everything froze right and they got stuck there so i would like to put a question to you over here ravi so like just imagine you are shackleton with your team on board and you are stuck in the middle of the ocean in ice what would be your first thing that you would be doing what will you do first what will come to your mind Given the occasion of this discussion, let me just explain it a bit. So just think about it. You are on a ship. You've got right. 20 men with you. Uh, you all are pepped up that you are going to be the first person to land on Antarctic. You're 97 miles away from the shore and your ship gets stuck. Now, everything is freezing slowly everything is freezing so you got to stay inside but it it's more like more like a situation crazy situation dangerous situation people would panic uh, and everybody would be in in a in a weird mindset they would be scared some of them will start questioning the leadership things things like those will start happening yeah. yeah as a leader as a leader you might be thinking okay what will happen uh, for the food supply maybe we can walk towards the uh, you know our destination yeah maybe i mean we, there yeah. are, there are so many things as a leader you would start looking at you would see okay right. just 97 miles why why should i just walk start walking but hey it's mm -hmm. super cold you'll you will go you're going to go frozen if you start walking uh, well let's just kind of dig the ice out and go back I've got 20 men well mm -hmm. are they ready to do that there are so many things that you can think of right. but to me the first thing is to get everybody together all right. 20 men will be in I mean if you've seen a ship maybe I have not seen a ship but in the movies and all we've seen it there are small cabins and they all are in their own cabins scared cold you don't want them in that state as a leader right. you would want them out and together warm talking mm -hmm. having that adrenaline pumped up 
so that everybody is focused towards one goal and everybody is thinking right because it's pretty easy when when you're in dark and gro- gloomy and cold place to to forget everything and just think about your own survival but there is what the leadership or the leader within you comes out if you right. start bringing everybody together and i believe that's what uh, sir shakuntala did, did right right uh, i believe you, and, you call uh, yeah. you call something that was a, some medicine he uh, yeah prepared. so shackleton was into mental medicine at that point of time because when this happened he was like first what about my men and you know managing the uh, energy the outlook their engagement and the you know the cohesion of his team was like the first most priority for him and though he was like helping them in all the daily chores and everything and you know he was still having that thing in his mind that how do i reach my destination how do i you know um, complete my expedition that i came for but now now you see there is a change in the mindset also right because first his uh, expedition was to reach the antarctic and now slowly what has happened he is stuck and now for him his men have become more important he have to take care of them and he started you know playing games and you know they uh, started having dog races and you know he kept his men very engaged at that particular point of time but you know over the period of time when you see uh, it really becomes very uh, difficult also to engage people all the time and when you feel that it becomes a part of a leader it becomes on the attribute of the leader that how he is keeping his team engaged now if you connect to the today's time when we are all working from home in this pandemic uh, it's a great responsibility on the shoulder of the leaders how they are going to drive their team how how they will have the cohesion in them and how they will be managing their energy as one right ravi absolutely so- absolutely and uh, that's where i wanted to bring out a thought that what sir shackleton did was to bring in mental medicine bring in everybody together on the deck having games and 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 plays and music and what not but that would only sustain for that much time it right. is it, it is yes it's going to bring a freshness of breath and everybody would get kind of little bit of excitement but if you keep doing that they will it will go stale so the most important thing along with that right along with that you got to keep your men you got to keep your team engaged in meaningful work not just fun and games and that was something brilliant in sir shackleton's story that what he did when he realized that the ship was tilted halfway on one side right. and and they had to abandon the ship they all came out of the ship made tents outside on the frozen uh, frozen water and they they were ensuring that everybody was engaged by meaningful work you go hunting you go fishing you you make tracks everything that could make them survive that harsh cold temperature and people those 20 men if you don't give them work a free mind is devil's place and that is exactly what would happen if you don't give them enough work and uh, i believe sir sackleton did that amazingly and at the same time he also did something very crucial right uh, there is a proverb which is keep your friends close but your enemies closer and that's one of the aspect that he brought wherein i mean it's natural when you are in a situation of uh, have or or disaster people will start questioning you people will start questioning the situation there will be someone who will uh, question everything 
people will start questioning why did he do that why did he choose this why did we uh, why are we in this situation on the first place now mm-hmm. if 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 he would have let that creep up then i don't think those 20 men would be together as one unit so what he did was very interesting and i think we all should take that as a learning because a lot of time we repel people who dislike us or who and unfortunately we also start disliking them and we start repelling <laughs> them and what he did was instead of repelling people who was questioning him he attracted them so they had all the tents outside for everybody so what he did he made the tents or he ordered the tents for those four or five people who were questioning his authority to be housed in the same tent he was in so so that he could have that gelling that buddy that relationship going on so that he could explain them things in a much better way and then get them on on his own side which was which was amazing when i when i read this and i heard the story i was like wow that's crazy because it's so easy for us as human being to start despising people who are talking against us but then again as a leader you have to ensure that you take the right step and instead of pushing people away those don't like you you should instead get closer and understand why they don't like you and try and solve that so that the the whole camaraderie comes together i mean obviously you don't want please said yeah what i was coming to is like obviously you don't want to kind of run behind people liking you that's not the point but the camaraderie is the point wherein people listen and understand and take decisions based on right facts and figures instead of uh, blind followers or just yes man right you don't need all of that so that's another aspect i wanted to bring and and i believe that was that was the most important aspect as well otherwise he, his team would have been broken into pieces right right so uh, ravi most of it i resonated with you know when the loss of endurance happened so we, you we you were telling me that you know the ship was tilted and it was like visibly you know into the um, eyes and you know one fine day when they were all in their tents and you know they could see that the ship is like tilting tilting and just going into the eyes and within you know few minutes it just ice just you know shut off on the ship yeah, and the you know, ice it just was, ate it yeah you know we say uh, whatever the ice gets the ice keeps if i'm right Absolutely. and uh, at at that point of time shackleton was so heartbroken i i think so he wrote in his diary like today we lost the endurance i cannot speak more and uh, at that point of time you see the shift of his uh, leadership the goal uh, of his mission now have changed earlier the expedition was the goal and now what is the goal for him is like you know how his men will survive or how he will lead them to the survival or how will i help them believe that they can even survive so you know that's when he uh you know started having those uh, uh sessions and in those tents where he started uh, you know keeping his um you know fr- enemies closer because you know he wanted to continuously assess because his mission have now changed and uh, people have to you know uh, realign themselves to adjust to this and he has to show that commitment to that objective that his mission have changed so you know you have to be very flexible around it to achieve it and that you can do only with a great uh, mindset or attitude you know he showed that kind of commitment uh, to the changing objective now that he has in mind because you have to be like entirely flexible and you can be flexible only with the right amount of attitude and the mindset because he had to maintain his team's belief that now his mission have changed and that he did by maintaining their collective energy 
so this was something that was you know uh, uh, very much enduring for Shackleton to do that. Yeah, I mean, uh, as a leader, he had to be courageous as well, because uh, as you mentioned, right, the whole goal was changed. The end results that he was so passionate about, even after people uh, telling him not to go in the season, he he went on and he continued the journey, and he could see the see the goal, ninety seven miles from the sea you could you could see the shore and still you cannot uh, you cannot achieve it for the reasons that are not in, under your control and there are so many stories about kings who lost everything just because of their madness to achieve something but right. at here uh, sir shackleton pivoted and that's one of the key aspect what he did in his whole whole journey and yes that that super duper goal of achieving a human being the first human being reaching antarctic at that age uh, and time would have been something different but then he gave more importance to the life of 20 men that he had and he knew uh, going and reaching that goal of 97 miles if even if he walks and reaches there he would lose many people probably he'd lose himself as well and it would not be a success without the whole crew I guess that's what was going on in his mind uh, and then he decided against achieving that goal rather than achieving another goal that he made for himself which was returning back safely ensuring everybody was safe alive when he reached back home and God's will everything turned out well for him uh, not I wouldn't say turned out well because they had to put a lot of effort and uh, courage and and their skills and and reach land but right. this is the whole story I mean when you read the story or listen to the story everybody has their own set of learnings their own set of understanding between you and me uh, i read it you read it we listened to this story and when we were talking not in this podcast but before this when we were talking there were classic items that just you grasped and there was few things that that resonated with me so i mean it's all perception uh, but putting this all together and making sure that the right goals are set right results are being shout after and right attributes are honed is is what we take away from the story and and even though that whole expedition failed they did not reach the antarctic this is still mm-hmm. considered as one of the most important stories of its time and it, it is still being referred today in management stories and in management studies uh, it's just brilliant so i mean with that i would i mean with that i would say it's it's an amazing discussion that we had i hope uh, listeners take some learnings out of it maybe you go and search for sir sackleton story about the endurance expedition and uh, or read about it I, th- I believe there's a movie as well but uh, there there are tons of content on his story and and learnings that one can get so for our listeners you know they might be thinking that what happened to shackleton after that because he was like almost around 400 uh, days on ice and then what happened next <laughs> yeah so so uh, you know in uh, in around after uh, you know um, an year or so the ice started breaking up and you know they the men you know they launched few uh, lifeboats and they could you know reach the nearby deserted island and uh, from there they planned their next move and you know 
from there they got rescued so it's a story for all the listeners to go back and read about i'm just closing it on like they were finally <laughs> rescued by big vessel so that is one thing that i wanted to add and you know that someone have something to take back so with that uh, i would say thank you very much for joining in today on focus hive have a great day ahead bye bye